Hello again. Today I'm going to prepare benzyl chloride. Benzyl chloride is a very useful alkylating agent. It is hydrolyzed by water to form benzyl alcohol and hydrochloric acid. So not surprisingly, it is a potent lacrimator or tear gas and is also very irritating to the skin. There are already a few videos about making benzyl chloride on YouTube. I put the links to these videos down in the video description. The way benzyl chloride is prepared in these videos is by nucleophilic substitution using benzyl alcohol and hydrochloric acid. I will be preparing benzyl chloride by the free radical chlorination of toluene. Benzyl chloride is in fact prepared industrially by the gas phase photochemical reaction of toluene with chlorine. You can see an example of a free radical chlorination in the gas phase on YouTube, where this process is used to make parachlorobenzyl chloride from parachlorotoluene. I put a link to this video in the video description. However, I won't be using chlorine gas. This procedure is based on the discussion in the Science Madness Forum where the direct use of TCCA for the radical chlorination of toluene was talked about and tested. The link to the relevant discussion is also provided in the video description. In a home setting, chlorine gas needed for the free radical chlorination is often produced from TCCA and hydrochloric acid. But it should be no surprise that TCCA can be used directly in the generation of chlorine radicals as it is similar in structure to NBS that is commonly used in radical brominations. Such brominations are also known as Wolf-Ziegler brominations. The only chemicals needed for this preparation are toluene and TCCA. But we also need another special ingredient, a bright sunny day. I bought the toluene in a hardware store. The TCCA, or trichloroisocyanuric acid, was bought at a pool supply store. It came in the form of large, solid 200 gram tablets. The bright sunny days were supplied by the universe. Thanks, universe! The strong sunlight will serve as a radical initiator, and that is why I did this reaction outside. First, I had to transform the large, solid chunk of TCCA to a powder. I used a nice big rolling pin as it was intended to be used by angry housewives on their cheating husbands. Off screen I further crushed the produced crude powder with a mortar and pestle to a very fine consistency and this fine powder was used in the reaction in 8 approximately equal portions. For this reaction I used a 1 liter 2 necked round bottom flask equipped with a thermometer and a stir bar. The thermometer will allow me to monitor the progress of the reaction. I poured 400 milliliters of toluene into the reaction flask. I then turned on the stirring and added the first approximately 25 gram portion of TCCA. After adding the first portion of TCCA, for a while nothing happened, but then without warning the reaction started and by the rate at which the temperature was rising, it was obvious that the reaction is quite exothermic or in other words, it produces a lot of heat. After the reaction died down and cooled to about 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, I added the second 25 gram portion of TCCA and again nothing happened at first, but after a while I saw a large increase in temperature, this time the content of the flask boiled slightly. And this is all of the work I got done on the first day. On the second day I started with filtering the reaction mixture prior to adding the next portion of powdered TCCA. This was done for two reasons. First reason. This is an important safety measure against too much unreacted TCCA being present in the reaction mixture at any given time. If some TCCA was left unreacted each time, this could lead to a thermal runaway later when it finally decided to react. Second reason. If too much solid is present in the reaction mixture, my magnetic stir won't be able to stir the mixture. After filtering, I poured the filtrate back into the 1 liter tunac reaction flask. Then I went back outside and added the third 25 gram portion of TCCA powder. Waited for this to react and the reaction mixture to cool down. Then added the fourth 25 gram portion of TCCA. After the reaction was complete, I again filtered the reaction mixture and poured the filtrate back into the 1 liter tunac reaction flask. I repeated this process until I added the final portion of TCCA. The additions of TCCA were done over the course of three days. It was quite noticeable that the filtrate goes from being colorless after the first filtration to being yellow after the fourth filtration. 
I should also mention that during the filtrations I experienced the lacrimatory effects of benzoyl chloride in the form of a stinging sensation in the eyes and tearing up. Because toluene and TCCA are quite easily available, I would like to warn my viewers that mixing toluene and TCCA is quite dangerous not only because of the products being produced, but also because of the exothermic nature of this reaction. This is also the reason why I performed this reaction by adding small portions of TCCA to the toluene, because if I added all of the TCCA to the toluene at once, the result would be a thermal runaway. After filtering the reaction mixture for the fourth and final time, I poured the filtrate into a 250 milliliter separating funnel. I added 100 milliliters of water to the filtrate, capped the separating funnel, shaken it vigorously, then waited for the phases to separate. The filtrate, or the organic phase, is the bottom layer. After removing the water and putting the washed organic phase back into the separating funnel, I repeated this procedure two more times. Washing the organic phase with 100 milliliters of water each time. After the last washing, I transferred the organic phase to a clean beaker and added three spatulas of anhydrous calcium chloride covered the beaker with plastic wrap and after standing for one hour I filtered the now clear organic phase into a 250 milliliter two-necked round bottom flask. I put the flask into a sand bath because an oil bath would smoke quite badly at the temperatures required to distill benzyl chloride. Next I assembled glassware for a simple distillation. The 250ml two-necked flask is sitting in a sand bath on top of a magnetic stir and heater. The side neck is not needed and is closed with a glass stopper. On top of the flask is a three-way adapter with a thermometer. To the adapter there is connected a 25cm Liebig condenser. The Liebig condenser doesn't have water running through it as air cooling is sufficient. In the picture you can also see a 250ml flask equipped with a vertical vacuum distillation adapter. This is the flask I used to collect the product. I began heating and stirring and it took quite some time for the distillation to begin. Although sand baths avoid many problems that oil baths have, they have one major problem as well, and that is that they take a very long time to heat up. After about 50 milliliters distilled over, at approximately 111 degrees Celsius, which was mostly toluene, the temperature started rising only very slowly and a lot of distillate came over during this time. I assume that at least some of that distillate is my desired product and I regret not using a non-connected Liebig condenser for a distillation column to achieve better separation. But finally, at approximately 174 degrees Celsius, the temperature stopped rising. I collected a small intermediate fraction and then collected everything coming over from 174 to 177 degrees Celsius. After this the temperature started dropping indicating that there are only much higher boiling fractions still present in the boiling flask. So at this point I stopped the distillation. Here you can see that in the boiling flask there remained a small amount of red liquid. The collected fractions left to right are the first fraction, collected from approximately 110 to 173 degrees Celsius, is mostly toluene, but I think it also contains a significant amount of benzyl chloride. The second, or middle fraction, collected at approximately 173 to 174 degrees Celsius, is most likely impure benzyl chloride. The third and final fraction is probably quite pure benzyl chloride, since all of it came over in a 3 degree interval. I poured my product in a pre-weighed amber glass storage bottle. I got 89.5 grams of product. This represents a 28% yield based on the amount of TCCA used in this reaction. I will use this product in further reactions and if it performs as expected, then I will be more confident that the produced benzyl chloride is of sufficient purity. Now I will take a moment to discuss the low yield and possible improvements to this procedure. If you remember, I used 400 milliliters of toluene as the reactant and solvent. But after the last filtration, before the washings with water, I had less than 250 milliliters of the reaction mixture left. 
I did four filtrations and I did not wash the solids after each filtration. This means that a large amount of the reaction mixture was left in the damp solids at every filtration. To be honest, I don't know why I didn't wash the solids with fresh toluene each time. This would probably increase the yield. The next big loss is in the distillation. I decided to do a simple distillation, but there was a lot of distillate that came over between 111 and 174 degrees Celsius. And at least some of that is benzyl chloride. So if I repeat this procedure, I will wash the solids after each filtration and do a fractional distillation instead of a simple one. Okay, that is all for now. See you next time.